Hello! So, in this video, we're going to be talking about this thing called the Taylor series. Now, the Taylor series is a massive thing in maths. Absolutely massive thing in maths. And it's so important. So important. And yet, I talk to a lot of people, a lot of my fellow students, for example, and they seem to kind of really struggle with Taylor series. And I have no idea why. Because effectively, all it is is just a formula. All right? And I think the trouble is, a lot of people, when they're learning maths, just try to memorise formulas. But I always say that's not maths. Maths is in actually understanding what's going on behind the formula and where the formula comes from. And so in this video, we're hopefully going to be able to kind of see where this formula comes from and what the formula actually means. I think that's kind of really crucial, really part of maths. And effectively, what Taylor series is, what the Taylor series is, is it's, it's, it's a description of a function. OK, it's, a, it's kind of trying to show one way of coming up with a function. OK, um, and it's a really nice way of coming up with a function. And we kind of go, go through all the derivation and everything uh, in just a moment. OK, but the first things first, I'm going to look at this kind of, you know, going to break it down. I'm going to look at the idea of a series. But in order to understand the idea of a series, we need to understand the idea of a function. So, uh, sorry, an idea of a sequence. OK, so let's suppose we have a sequence of numbers. OK, and I'm going to just note each term in the sequence. This is just called a term. OK, which is just, a, you know, essentially a sequence, just a list of numbers, OK, with some relationship between them, some pattern between them. OK, this is U1. Uh, then we have U2, U3, and we can carry on going right the way through to UN. And in actual fact, normally we can carry on the sequence forever. OK, now, like I say, the, the difference between a sequence and just a list of numbers, OK, is that a list of numbers can just be exactly that. It can just be a list of any old random numbers. OK, but a sequence has to have some kind of pattern, some kind of connection between each term in the sequence. OK, between each term in the sequence. And that's actually why sequences relate to functions, because a function, OK, if you boil down what maths actually is, maths is just, well, let me ask you a question. And it may be a question that you've never thought about before. What is maths? What is maths? Well, maths is just uh, it's just a description of patterns and relationships. OK, and one of the fundamental ways that we can describe uh, patterns and relationships is via functions. OK, and actually we can boil functions down to series and we can boil series down into sequences. So, so a function could actually describe this sequence here. OK, let me give you an example of a of a list or, or, or of a sequence, for example. OK, so here's an example of a sequence. I'm going to start with one. I'm going to start with one here. OK, then I'm going to go two. Then I'm going to go four. Then I'm going to go eight, 16. OK, and I'm going to go right the way. Now I can carry on like that. Now, hopefully you can see that the pattern here, the pattern here is going to be that I'm just being multiplied by two. So if I wanted to write that as a function, let me call this um, each term in my sequence. Let's say this is x. So this is x equals one x equals 2, this, this is x equals 2, OK? This is x equals 3, this is x equals 4, let's say. Um, does that work? No, it doesn't. Let me start here. Um, let me start here. Or does it work? No, that, that does work, sorry. That does work. So this is x equals 4, this is x equals 5, OK? And the function that describes this, so let's, let's call, you know, each term number, if you like, my subscript here. My subscript here, which denotes my term number, let's call that x. That's what I've done here. OK, and then the actual value itself, I'm going to call y. OK, therefore, I can come up with a function for this, which is y equals, what would it be? It would be 2, that's, my, that's the number which I'm doubling by, to the power of x. OK, so this would be a function which describes the sequence. OK, so hopefully you can see, basically, that, you know, if I just get rid of all this uh, and just, you know, kind of declutter it, Hopefully you, you've seen that, you know, a sequence can be described using a function. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, this is what we're kind of looking at in this video. OK. All right. So let's just get rid of all these annotations now. So that's what a sequence is. What is a series? Well, a series is just simply replacing, replacing these commas with pluses or minuses. So suddenly now, instead of just having a list of numbers, we've got some kind of relationship between them. This is actually called a combination. In actual fact, it's a linear combination. Um, and it is, yeah, it's a linear combination because it's a combination of elements. So U1, U2, U3, right the way through to UN. Okay, those are what, those are what we call elements. Uh, they were the elements in our sequence were were just the you know the, the numbers in the list, if you like. 
okay? And it's a, it's a linear, it's arranged in a linear way, or it's a combination of those elements arranged in a linear way, because you've got pluses or minuses in between, but you're not raising them to any power, for example, okay? So that's just what a series, so hopefully you've got in your head now what a series sequence is, and now you've got in your head now what a series is, all right? So now, now I want to basically consider a particular type of series, something called a power series. Now a power series, a power series is just where you start off with, um, let's say, x minus a, yeah, x minus a, and basically you want to try and raise this power here. You want to try and raise this power here. Now this will actually describe a function, okay, this will actually describe a function. Let's say, for example, if you have a function um, that looks like this, so this is, this is a function that looks like this, okay, um, and you want to basically, you know, this is this point here, this lowest point here is a, and you want to basically move this point such that it's at zero, okay? Or maybe if I maybe if I redraw this slightly, you know, slightly better, uh, something like that. Oops, there we go, something like that. So basically, where it crosses this axis at the moment, it's at a, okay? And what I want to basically move do is move this point such that it's over here. So in other words, we come up with a function that looks like that instead. So we basically just move the function. Well, that is a translation. Okay, that is a translation. In actual fact, I'm going to redraw this again. I'm going to start this again. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm, just so it works with this notation, I'm going to actually start the function over here. Okay, so this is an A. This is an A. Okay, I'm moving it to the, and I want to basically move it to the right. I want to move it to the right um, by how many units? Well, I want to move it to zero, so I want to move it by A. So therefore, this is what this translation, this is what this is saying. Okay, this is what this is saying. Um, okay, this is what this is saying. And this is this is a function, okay? Because at the moment, what I've drawn here is uh, f of x, f of x, mm, f of x is equal to x minus a squared. Okay, but I could equally do the same thing with cubed, with cubed, or I could do it with to the power of four. I could even do it with linear function or five or whatever. So basically, you know, the reason why we're considering it like this, the reason why we're considering it like this, is because um, you know this end can this end can vary. Okay, so this is what's known as a power series. I'm trying to basically show you that a power series can relate to a function, can relate to our function. Okay, and in general, you know, if you look at say like a, um, if you look at say like a quadratic, you can have something like x squared plus you know six x plus two for example and that could be our function there okay so it's if, if you like it's expanded out okay it's an expanded out case and so what basically we want to do is i want to try and come up with an expression for my function a general expression for my function that kind of looks like this i want to basically look get a function that looks like this but instead of just being instead of just stopping at two i want to say okay i can carry on forever what happens if i carry on forever so i want to come up with an approximation for my function which is say like infinitely differentiable okay which can kind of be differentiable differentiated an infinite number of times okay so what is that going to look like so you know i'm kind of trying to piece you know hint what the pieces are in the puzzle and hopefully you know you can fit them together yourself okay so in other words what i want to basically say is that my function can be written as a power series okay so i can have a constant here okay i can have a constant out the front here as well and it can be written as a power series so in other words i can carry on increasing it so a bit like you know a power series would be two sorry um you know i want to base if a polynomial for example let's say x cubed plus three x squared plus four x plus seven Okay, I want to basically try and come up with a function that looks something like that, except instead of it just stopping at three, I want to basically say, right, it can carry on forever. And this is the whole idea behind Taylor series. I want to come up with an approximation for my function. Okay, so hopefully you can see that when I do this in a minute, a power series, okay, if I just increase n, if I just increase n in here, what I'm basically doing is, um, you know, coming up with something that looks like a polynomial. Okay, this x minus a in here just corresponds to translation. So I'm just making it kind of the, the vanilla function, I call it. It's kind of just the standard function here, which is kind of the function which goes through zero. So this is the standard function y equals x squared, for example. Okay, but this, you know, I've, I've just moved it to make it look like that. Okay, right. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my function f of x. Okay, and I'm going to assume it can be written as a power series. So I'm assuming it can be written as a polynomial like this. So in other words, I'll have some constant, okay, that's my constant in this case, plus another constant times x, but not just x, I want to basically move my move my point so that it's around the origin, move my point so it's around the origin, so I'm going to say x minus a, 
okay? And then I'm gonna raise it by sort of uh, another one, so plus another constant, a2, x minus a, but this time it's gonna be squared, okay? So this corresponds to my x squared. Then I can carry on, I'll do another constant, another constant, times x minus a, this time all cubed, and basically the idea is that I can carry on forever and ever and ever. So this is what's known as a power series. And effectively what it is, it's just writing my function as a polynomial, which is kind of what we're used to. We're used to writing a function as a polynomial. So basically I've shown you how we can start with a sequence and then get a series fairly easily, but now what I'm trying to do is come up with a function that describes that series, a function that describes that series or that sequence, okay? So this is what I'm doing here, and I can write it as a polynomial. Okay, the difference is here that I can just carry on forever. I can just carry this function on forever. Okay. So now what the next question is, what is what is these coefficients here? Or what are these coefficients here? Okay, so what are these coefficients here? And that's kind of the next step which I want to try and can which I want to try and deduce. Okay. Now I can fairly obviously I can I can work out what a zero is. Okay. A zero a0 is just going to be the function evaluated at what? Well, it's going to be the function evaluated at um, when x equals a. Yeah, because if I put x equals a into all of these terms in here, yeah, that's just going to go to 0. That's going to go to 0. That's going to go to 0. In fact, all of the terms are going to go to 0 from then on. So I'm just going to be raising it to a higher and higher power. I'm going to be raising it to a higher and higher power. So therefore, all of these following terms are going to go to 0. So therefore, I can work out the first one just by plugging x equals a into this thing, into, sorry, into this thing up here. Oops. One minute. There we go. It's just this thing up here, okay? So uh, I can work out, you know, my function just by plugging in f equals, uh, f of a, okay? So when x equals a into my function, cool. Okay, so I've got a. Now, how am I going to attain a1? How am I going to attain this one here? Okay, how am I going to obtain this one here? Well, I can obtain it by finding the derivative. Yeah, finding the derivative, the first derivative. So if I find the first derivative, okay, I get rid of that. I get rid of that one, which is fine, but I already know that one. But effectively, what I do is I reduce. You know, I basically reduce. Um, you know, I reduce each of these terms, the x minus a terms, by one. You know, power by one. So in other words, this power goes to zero, so therefore that just becomes a constant, so it just disappears. But this one will be one, this one will be two, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let me just rewrite this actually. Okay, so in other words, if I have the derivative, derivative of f of x, so if I find the derivative of this, let me just write it out below. Okay, it's exactly what I've just said, but maybe if I show you it rather than describe it. Um, so the derivative of this would be, well, a0 is just constant, so that's going to disappear. This thing here, what's the derivative of this thing here? Well, it's just going to be a1, right? The x minus 1 just goes to 1, so it's just going to be 1 times a1. Okay, plus, this is going to be 2a2 times x minus a. Yeah, that power is going to be reduced by 1, so again, I'm just differentiating that term. Differentiate this term, plus 3a3, uh, x minus a to the power of 2, and so on, so on, so on. So we can carry on like that. Okay. Um, so therefore, if I plug, if I plug uh, a into this thing, if I plug a into this thing like I did, like I did above, then this term will disappear. This term will disappear. In fact, all of these terms will just go to zero. I'm sorry. You know, this will go to zero if I plug x equals a. In other words, if I plug f dash of a into here, then I'm left with a1 plus this is going to go to zero. This is this one's going to go to zero. Okay. Uh, and then, in fact, all following terms are going to go to zero. All right. So basically, if I plug, uh, you know, my f of a is going to be equal to f dash of a. OK, so I've got now an expression for a zero and for a one. Cool. OK, now what about a two? What about a two? OK, so what about a two? Uh, well, maybe if I get rid of that, actually. OK, so what about now a two? So what about an expression for a2? Well, what about if I take the second derivative? Okay, because, you know, if I take the first derivative, that, that disappears. So fairly obviously, if, the sec if I take the second derivative, that disappears, and hopefully that should disappear as well. That should disappear as well. Let me just try and write this out in a slightly neater way. Okay, so I've, I've kind of, you know, I'll try and present the argument now like this. Um, so, you know, I'll just quickly run through my first two. Uh, so a naught 
Okay, it's just when, you know, I want to basically get rid of all of these terms here. I want to get rid of all these terms here. So um, I just want to left, you know, I just want to left with this term here. Um, and the way which I can do that is just by plugging in x equals a into this, into this, into this, into this ex expansion. Okay, this power series expansion. So when I plug a equals a in there, so that goes to zero, that goes to zero, that goes to zero. So all of these terms effectively just cancel and they all go to zero. Okay, and so therefore I'm just left with a naught. Cool, okay. Now then if I want to find a one, well, you know, I just want to be left with this term here. Okay, so the way which I do that is just simply by, well, if I take the derivative of it, then a naught disappears. I know what a naught is anyway, I'm not worried about that one. Okay, but look, I'm just left with a one because the derivative of x minus a uh, with respect to x, just one. So I'll just be left with that, okay, there, so it's just a, a1. Um, then the derivative of, of, of this thing here, so the a2x minus a all squared, is just going to be 2a2x minus a to the power of 1. And then the derivative of a3x minus a all cubed um, with respect to x is 3a3x minus a all squared, and so on, so on, so on. So then if I just plug in x equals a into that, well, look, that goes away, that goes away. So effectively, any term with x minus a, if I plug in a into it, it just goes away, okay? So therefore, I'm just left with a1 if I just have f, da f dash of a equals um, equals a, okay? So now if I want to try and find an expression for a2, well, I just want to be left with this term here, or this just a this coefficient here, a2. So in other words, if I take the second derivative, look what happens, okay? Second derivative is just the derivative of this f dash of a, right? So I'll be left with 0, which I'm not really concerned about and then a derivative of constants that's going to be zero plus zero okay the derivative of a one is going to be zero okay plus well what's the derivative of this thing well it's going to be two a two okay times the derivative of this thing which is you know derivative of x minus a which is just one so it's two a two times one plus well this is going to become three bring the power down three a three but to bring the power down so it's going to be three times two a three yeah, 3 times 2a3, and this is going to become x minus a to the power of 1, okay, so plus dot dot dot, all right, now then if I plug f double dash of a in, um, it's going to become, well this is 0, 0, this has become 2a2 that's going to be left, plus 3 times 2a3, um, a minus a, all right, plus dot dot dot, uh, so that's going to go to 0, so therefore f, dash, f double dash of a is going to be equal to 2, a2, so 2a2 is f double dash of a, okay, which then implies that a2 is going to be equal to f double dash of a over 2. I'll just divide 3 by 2, okay. Now let's try and find an expression for a3. Let's try and find an expression for a3. Well, hopefully you can see the pattern. If I take the third derivative, look what happens. So the third derivative of, of my function with respect of my power series expansion with respect to x. So it's just going to basically be the derivative of this thing here, my, double de my second derivative, okay. So... This is going to become a constant. 2a2 is just a constant. Okay, so it's going to be 0 plus 0 plus a derivative of a constant is just 0, right? Plus, this has become, become 3 times 2, a3 times x minus a uh, to the power of 0. So that's going to become 1, okay? 3 times 2a3. What's the next term in the sequence going to be? Well, it's going to be, you know, if I write it up here, what's the next term in the sequence up here? It's going to become a4 x minus a to the power of 4, which means that when I take the derivative, it's going to become, or the third derivative, it's going to become, it will become 4 times 3, uh, one minute, yeah, it's going to become 4 times 3 um, times 2, x minus a. That's the next term in the sequence if you take the third derivative. You can verify that yourself if you want, but all I've just basically done is I've just now considered an extra term maybe to help you see it a little bit. Okay, but then basically if I just plug in f triple dash of a, okay, you know, 0, 0, 0, 3, eight, 3 times 2, a3, uh, plus 4 times 3 times 2, uh, this is going to become a minus a, okay, and all the rest terms are going to be involved a minus a as well, so that's going to disappear. So therefore, for the, tr the third derivative, so in other words, a3, so 3 times 2a3 is going to be equal to f triple dash of a. So 3 times 2, effectively times 1, I suppose I should put in, times a3 is going to be given by the triple derivative, or third derivative of a. Okay, so in other words, what that means is that the third derivative, uh, sorry, a3 is going to be given by the 
third derivative over 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, uh, well, I can rewrite that as just the 3 factorial, yeah, because 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1. It's basically right, it's multiplication going down, yeah, so the integer no value is going down. I'm just going to consider uh, the fourth derivative, just hopefully you can see the pattern, but fourth derivative just to make sure, and I'm going to write the fourth derivative in brackets up here. So the fourth derivative is just the derivative of this third derivative, <laughs> okay. Uh, do it yourself, yeah, uh, if, you're not, if you're not kind of, you know, this is a constant. Okay, so this is going to go to zero. So therefore, this is going to become four times three times two times one plus something which is going to involve, I think it's going to be, let me just check, it's going to be five times three times two times x minus a. So that's going to be the next term. Okay, so when I plug in a into that to make all further t all subsequent terms disappear, I'll just be left with four times three times two times one. Sorry, that's I've missed an a4 there, haven't I? be an a4 in there. Uh, this is a4 uh, plus, that should be a5 as well. Oh my word. That should be a5. Yeah, I don't think I put an a4 in there, did I? No, I did. Oh, I just didn't write it down there. Okay, there should be an a4 there. And there should be an a5 in there. So this is a4 plus, and this is going to become 5 times 3 times 2, uh, a5 times a minus a. So that's going to go to 0. Hopefully you can see that all subsequent terms are going to go to 0 now. Okay, so that's going to disappear. So I'm going to be left with 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 a4 is equal to the fourth derivative of f uh, of a. Okay, so 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is going to be, uh, sorry, a4 is going to be equal to the fourth derivative of a. Okay, so therefore a4 is going to be equal to, just divide through, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, okay, which I can just rewrite as 4 factorial. That's 4 factorial. So effectively you can just, hopefully you can see the pattern, that, you know, the third derivative, the third derivative, um, the, the, sorry, the third coefficient was just the third derivative over 3 factorial, fourth uh, coefficient was just the fourth derivative over four factorial. Second derivative was just, uh, sorry, the second coefficient was the second derivative over two. This is factorial because that's just like two times one. Okay. Um, a1 is just like the first derivative, uh, if you like, over over one factorial. So that's fine because that's just going to be one. That's fine. Okay. And then this is just going to be a naught. And, you know, this is if you like the naught derivative. It's just going to be the function itself. Okay, over naught factorial, if you like, yeah, um, because naught factorial is just one. Okay, and there is a proof for that. Well, I can show you very, very quickly. There's a proof for that. So if we consider like three times two times one, you know, three factorial is three times two times one. Okay, two factorial is um, two times one, which is just going to be three factorial. Yeah, it's like three times two times one over three. So it's like three factorial over three. Yeah, um, one factorial is just going to be one, so that's going to be two times one over two. Yeah, just so effectively, this is just like two factorial over two. Okay, so then zero factorial should be well. What's it going to be? Well, it's going to be just following this pattern. It should be one factorial over one. Okay, so therefore that's going to be one over one. So therefore, naught factorial is one. Okay. So there we go. So basically, these are the coefficients, and hopefully now you can see the pattern that we can just come up with a nice, simple um, kind of expression. So what we end up with. So f of x is equal to uh, a a nit a zero. What was a zero? A zero was f zero of a over a, which we just tend to write as just f of a. Yeah. Um, then plus a one, which was a one was f dash a over 1 factorial, which is tend to write as f dash a, okay, and that was times by, what was it times by, if we go right back to the beginning, effectively we were trying to kind of substitute, you know, all coefficients back into this thing here, right, this thing here, so maybe if I just write that down actually very, very quickly. Okay, so I've kind of written down all the information that we've got now, just to kind of, you know, hopefully to, so that you can see it a little bit better. OK, um, rather than jumping all over the place. So now it's just a case of just substituting back in. So let's start again. So f of x is equal to a naught, which remember was f of a. OK, so we've got here f of a. OK, plus a1, which was f dash a. f dash a times by x minus a. 
yeah, makes a lot of sense. So that's that bit done, that's that bit done. Uh, now we consider this bit, so it's bus A2, which was F double dash A over 2 factorial, K times by X minus A all squared. Okay, plus A3, I'm going to write it down here, so plus A3, uh, which was F triple, uh, sorry, the third derivative of A over 3 factorial times X minus A all squared. Oh, sorry, x minus a all cubed, uh, plus a4, which was f4, fourth derivative of a over 4 factorial, times by x minus a to the power of 4, plus dot, 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 okay, and so on, and so on, and so on. So basically, this is kind of the general Taylor series expansion. So all you have to basically remember, it's a nice, easy one to remember, okay, um, you kind of increase x minus a by, you know, 1 each time, x minus a by 1 each time, um, so here, this is technically this is technically x minus a to the power of zero, which of course is just one. Anything to the power of zero is just one, so we don't tend to write that. Okay, but effectively, you know, this is this is kind of what we're doing. Uh, so it's technically over one factorial, I suppose. Um, okay, but we don't tend to write that either, just for kind of convenience. But effectively, you look at the power that tells you what derivative you need for the coefficient. Okay, and it also tells you over what factorial you have. Okay, so you're just raising the power by one each time. So you've got, you know, hopefully if you understood the power series kind of, uh, you know, how we came up with the power series, then this is kind of just bread and butter to you. So effectively just, you look at the power. So if maybe if I look at this one, so here the power is four. So therefore I know it's going to be the fourth derivative and the fourth factorial. Okay. So likewise, what would be the, you know, what would be the term, say like for the 67th uh so x minus a to the power of 67 what will be the coefficient for that one. Will it be the 67th derivative of a, okay, over 67 factorial, all right? Uh, if it was, let's say, for example, if it was looking at the 1024th term, okay, it would be the 1024th derivative of a, okay, over 1024 factorial, okay? So it's as simple as that simple as that okay now note that there is a very special case there is a very special case called the mclaurin mclaurin uh, mclaurin series which is essentially just the taylor series the taylor series at a equals zero so in other words about the origin okay and that's you know taylor mclaurin actually came up with it afterwards but actually they gave him this you know so you may think well, it's a bit of a cheat isn't it so basically taylor did all the hard work he came up with this kind of formula he came up with this with this series here he came up with this series here then mclaurin came along and said you know if you stick a equals zero into that right if you stick a equals zero into that then you just you know you, you just get well, what would it be um you just get this f of x plus f of zero sorry, equals, equals f of 0 plus f dash of 0, uh, x, all right, that's getting good, plus f double dash of 0 over 2 factorial, okay, times x squared, all right, plus f triple dash of 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed, plus f 4 of 0 uh, over 4 factorial times x4, all right, and so on, so on, so on. So basically, McLaurin came up with that afterwards. And he said, you know, if you stick A equals zero into that, you get another series. Well, obviously, all right, obviously you do. Um, this is the series you got. But actually, Taylor, uh, McLaurin was such a good mathematician. I think he probably used it in some famous equation or something, which is why they call it now the McLaurin series. But actually, to be honest with you, credit where credit's due, um, most people call it Taylor series regardless of whether it's McLaurin. So Taylor series at zero. <laughs> That'll teach McLaurin. Come up with a series. Can you imagine Taylor series doing Taylor doing all that work? Then McLaurin comes along and says, you know, if you stick a equals zero into that, you get that series there. You get that series there. And Taylor was thinking, yeah, I know, <laughs> but I came up with the general case anyway. But you know, anyway, besides the point, I think McLaurin, uh, McLaurin came up with a lot, with it, you know, in a big bit of maths anyway. Okay. Um, cool. So in another video, I'm basically going to, you know, not going to do it in this video, but in another video, I'm going to do in, do actually what the Taylor series means. So this is the derivation of the Taylor series. OK, in another video, the next video, I'm going to do what does this Taylor series actually mean? What does it actually tell us? What is it actually doing? 